Hello, hello, my lovely population one people. Getting everything started here for a very, very special interview. The number one asked about pop one player interview has been scheduled, set, and is happening today. You guys have been waiting for this one for way too long. And uh, this guy is a busy guy to get kind of uh, into a schedule. But first, I wanted to say welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you for showing up on Facebook. Thank you for showing up on Twitch. I am not going to be running uh, an audible uh, chat this interview because uh, it could get pretty noisy. And I want to give full respect to our very important person of the day. And uh, only thing that I do want to share with you is this beautiful map here we are going to be looking at is made by More Cowbell. So uh, if you guys want to play a TDM style game in this nice little farmlands uh, remake with some minions here and there, feel free to jump into it. But the most important person of the day that we are interviewing is Mr. Sumachi. How are you doing today, Hello. Sumachi? They're pretty all right. Hope you're awesome. doing well as well. Yeah, well, I was just talking with chat real quick about letting them know how hard it is to lock you into place because how committed you are to population one. So I just want to say thank you for your commitment, for your gameplay, for your knowledge, for your fan base that you've created. And just thank you for being like our number one champion for uh, Vale. So congratulations on yeah. that. It was really yeah. cool in the Vale stuff to see so many Population 1 people able to transfer over because it wasn't very a very simu similar game. Mm -hmm. But being there and then like Cobra being there as well was really cool. Mm -hmm. Very true. Um, well, we're going to go through a series of questions and then we're going to kind of pop into some questions about your weapon uh, choices and things like that. Feel free to expand on anything you'd like and feel free to pass on anything that's just not... A good question for you, okay? Okay, sounds good. Cool. Well, easy question to start with is where are you located? Um, right now, I am in the northeastern USA, so I'm in Virginia right now. Um, I just had to move away from where I lived before, but just rent rent prices are really, really high. <laughs> so I had to find somewhere that was a little bit cheaper to live. Understandable. I think rent prices are pretty much insane anywhere you are in the U.S. right now. Just crazy. Um, yeah. Would, would you mind sharing with us what you do for a living outside of playing these games? Yeah, so it's actually a lot. <laughs> it, there's a whole lot of um, streaming. I actually do the streaming as a full-time job right now, um, as well as YouTube as well. So anytime you guys see me live on Twitch, anytime you guys see me on YouTube creating videos or content there, that's where I earn all of my revenue to be able to pay my bills, to be able to do everything there. Um, so it's a lot of that. I do some training sessions as well for Population 1 or other VR games. Um, so there's a little bit of income that way. and then, But everything is related to streaming or related to VR content in some way. Very cool. Well, I'm curious because I actually don't know a lot of these answers. This is one of them I'm most curious about. Uh, when did you start playing Population 1? Yeah, so I started right when the game came out. Um, my buddy had one of my teammates, actually. We've been together since um, before Population 1. So my team, Vortex VR, and I have been together about five years at this point. And we started in Pavlov. Hey, listen. And I had one of my Pavlov teammates whose name's Crack J. He had messaged me and he said, hey, like, there's a Battle Royale game coming out in a couple of weeks. Um, do you want to try it out when it comes out? And he him asking me that question was essentially like, oh, okay, I, I guess, like, do you think it'll be any good? Yeah. Um, and I ended up just buying it day one with him, and that's when I started. Okay. All right. Well, as everybody's rolling into chat saying hello, Simachi, where can we find your content online? The primary stuff is going to be on Twitch, so I'll try to stream every day on Twitch. Um, it'll be a different game, so it's not just going to be Population 1. You're going to find just general VR content there. Um, from Beat Saber, Veil, Breachers, um, just any new FPS VR game. I tend to focus on the games that I'm actively playing competitively. That way I can stay up to date on those skills. 
And then I have um, YouTube where I have tutorials and game Listen. reviews as well. I do Twitter. Um, I basically have all of the big social medias, but the main ones are Twitch and YouTube for me. Okay, very good. Let's talk about your gamer tag, Sumachi. Where did you come up with that name? What does it mean to you? Yeah, I came up with it when I was probably seventh grade. So I guess that was probably, what, 12, 12 years old, 13 years old, something around there. Yeah. Um, I was actually, when I was playing RuneScape, and I, it's really weird, the name's Link. Uh, the name Link was taken for some reason. Apparently people liked Zelda. But... <gasps> Are you a Zelda fan? <laughs> yeah, I have two Zelda tattoos, actually. Yes, you're in the Zelda family. Are you super excited for next month, by the way? Yeah, I'm excited to see what they announced for that and um, what it all looks like, for sure. Yeah, um, the, the trailer looks insane. I'm excited about that. Sorry. Back to Sumatra. Nah, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, so when I was playing RuneScape, um, all of the main names that I wanted were taken, so I kind of just picked a couple of letters and picked some things that sounded cool together, and I came up with mm -hmm. Sumachi that way. It doesn't have any like specific meaning other than it's just it's just me. So I, I had to have a. I wanted to come up with a name that wasn't taken on really any other platform or that I've never heard before, and this ended up being what I sounded out and hey, what sounded okay. Hey, listen. This is a great name, and I'm going to tell you. Um, when I joined the game and I heard of the name Sumachi, and it was this legendary name because I hadn't run into you in lobbies and I hadn't run by your streams or anything. Um, it's a great name because it's very powerful. When I heard it, I was like, that sounds like somebody who's going to seriously kill me and I'm just going to be like, please don't res me. It's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> and like That's you awesome. ended up being th this actual player in my, you know, fantasy world in my head of what Sumachi was like on the game playing field. And it's exactly how you play. You literally can run anywhere around circles, people. I mean, I've watched you run through zone uh, and just like pop out on the other side of a person when they're like how did he get there i don't understand how did that he's a cheater and it's like nope he's just that good <laughs> so you picked a great name i love it um awesome i well, i'm glad you like it i actually have a um a document on my computer that is just a list of like it's funny that you say that it's a good name because I meet a lot of people who can't pronounce it right. Or, you know, if I meet a, a kid online or if they just read my name or something, like nobody can pronounce it right. I actually have an entire like notepad document of all the names people have called me. And I just keep <laughs> keep track of all of them because I feel like it would be better to have a name that's like, you know, just simpler. That's just like very easy to be like the headshot master or something yeah. easy, right? Yeah, but, no, I love this name. And what's yeah. like, what's an example of one of the funny ones you've heard? Um, I mean, people will say anything um, from <laughs> one of my friends calls me Smoochie. One of the kids yeah, that misread okay. my name called me Stomach. Like there, there's just been so <laughs> many Sulachi. Yeah, if you're dyslexic. I, I, yeah. <laughs> it's it really like funny something. though cuz sometimes people do like appreciation posts or something but they don't spell spell my name right on the appreciation post either <laughs> so it gets really funny I'm like god dang it I should have picked nice. something easier No but I it's love funny. it I think it's a good name <laughs> Um so let's talk about your level what level are you currently Currently I'm at 62 Okay and uh are you in a clan yeah, so I am not in one of the ones that mainly participates in the competitive stuff um, or like the competitive events that go on right now, but I do own Vortex VR, um, mm -hmm. which is a competitive VR esports league that runs across multiple different VR titles, okay. um, and I'm one of the owners for that game or for that uh, for that team. Very cool. Um, and so my next question is: Is do you play in comps for Population One? Um, I used to play in comps for Population 1 quite a bit. Um, I was part of Arc League the first couple of seasons, and recently I've done mixed doubles a little bit. Okay. But competitive Population 1 isn't a huge amount of fun anymore for me. It used to be an event where people could go and just have, like, like you'd recognize everybody, and everybody was kind of like, all, all of the crap or smack talk was, like, really respectful and wasn't, like, just... I don't know the, where it is in the level of toxicity now. Yeah, um, sure. 
But it, it ended up getting to the point where it was just too much toxicity for me to want to deal with. So I've backed <laughs> off from competitive population one for the most part. Like okay. I'll still do, um, Listen. I'll still do occasional like one-off tournaments. Like in the past year, I've done some like sword tournaments that I've won and a couple of other things. But I haven't done any of the main like three-person cop tournaments. Okay. Some of that is the toxicity, and then another part of that is just like. The style of gameplay that comes with playing comp versus playing um, just for fun or playing casually is a lot more, like, there's a lot more strategy involved, but I really don't like head peeking as a mechanic. Uh -huh. um, just because, like, there's, if head peeking worked properly where I could always hit someone's head, like, their head was actually revealed and the hitboxes were good, it might uh -huh. be okay. But because it, it doesn't feel... It feels like a lot of people abusing these mechanics that I just don't really enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to play that way. It's kind of boring just sitting over a wall and waiting for three minutes until the zone moves a little bit. So. Yep, I totally get that. Um, okay, so let's talk about the maps and all of the changes in Pop hey, 1. Um, listen. Are you a, do you prefer the older map? Um, or do you prefer the newer map with Metro and Kingdom and Frontier? What What is your preference of those two main style maps? I really prefer the new one. Um, I really like the bounce pads in general and just yeah. anything that can help you move and get around the map faster. I really think Population 1 needs an additional movement mechanic to just help you get around. I know people have wanted a grapple hook for a long time. Just something like that to help you get around the map would be awesome. Hey, I think I know why they've temporarily at least gone back to the old map and it might just be because it runs a lot smoother so with a huge influx of like new free-to-play players they want to make sure all of them are having like the least laggy and the best experience they can sure. yep. so i think that might be one of the reasons that they've gone back to the um the older one in the meantime um but i definitely prefer the new one metro and um all of the verticality that kingdom and metro were giving okay. was really cool and so i'm gathering your answer on this but what is your favorite part of that map of the uh, the, of the evolving one map with yeah with Metro Kingdom Frontier the jump pads what's your favorite part of that map yeah it's Metro with definitely Metro with the jump pads and with all yeah. of that Metro Royale was definitely my favorite mode when it was around um, okay. just the the close range all the teams involved and then the the matches didn't last very long as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I did notice my computer starting to slow down a little bit with all of the loot and all of the things that had to render in that side of the map. But I definitely like re uh, Metro the most. Okay. Uh, if you could take away a part of the map, what part of the map would you want Big Box to maybe like erase off of there and maybe replace it with something? Um, I don't think any of the, like, because there's kind of like nine squares in the map, the way that it's set up. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd release any of the specific like squares where anything is. I just want the routes to get to them to be less open. Um, so like what they did with the Sacred Village and how the the hill leading up to it used to just be essentially like a death trap if you were caught yeah. outside of it. I'm glad that there's more cover and like more elevation there to work with to actually help you get out of that area, or at least there was on the evolving map um, that we had just played on recently. Mm -hmm. um, just areas like that, the rocks leading up from Defiance to Cemetery, um, areas like that where there's no loot and there's really nothing, I feel like um, are really hard, especially with like a random zone, if you don't pick right how you're just in such a hard spot. So I just like to see yep. a, those a little bit more balanced in terms of what they offer. Okay. Or again, another movement mechanic to be able to deal with them. Yep. I, I would love the grappling hook. That's actually the one that I've been saying. Just put some kind of zip line, something that's like Zelda-like in here. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd I love something that. like that or even like portable bounce pads where you could just like have one in your inventory and throw it somewhere. Yeah, um, that would be fun. But I know that one of the main things Population strives for is comfort in VR. I know a lot of the people that I've met um, who have never played VR games before, never played video games before, say that Population 1 is one of the only games in VR, they can play and not get motion sick. Um, so I know they focus really heavily on making sure the experience is streamlined and that people mm -hmm. don't get sick. So I know why they would need to put a lot of time and energy into figuring out, you know, does that work? Would it make people too sick? I know that when they did the sandbox, um, 
kind of the map thing where they had everybody submit their maps. They had to put specific sections in there, like make sure your your bounce pads aren't like ridiculously strong or anything. Like they're trying to <laughs> emphasize the comfort of getting into games and people wanting to keep people sticking around instead of making them sick. Sure. Okay. Uh, let's ask some fun personal questions to get to know you a little better as the human outside of the VR games. Uh, Sumachi, what is your favorite food? Favorite food? I'm gonna have to go with sushi. Um, sushi. It, not really any specific type. Uh, maybe eel, so unagi. But just being, um, just hanging out with my friends or um, like my girlfriend or my ex or anything, and just eating sushi or some of my best memories. Uh -huh. um, which is weird because the the state that I lived in the longest was Colorado, which you know a landlocked state, Me so too. no easy access to the ocean. Yeah. So. Yeah, I lived there for about gosh. 24 years or something yeah it was crazy i loved it there except for the uh the giant snow piles that would happen but then they'd melt away mm -hmm. in like two days and it was okay <laughs> yeah they'd melt away in yeah like an afternoon yeah but yeah it just got a little bit too expensive for colorado for uh the, uh, i might end up going back if i end up being able to um kind of match that again because that is where my family still is so mm -hmm. very cool uh, what is your favorite holiday? Holiday? I'd have to go with Halloween. Yes. Because it <laughs> allows people to, I guess, just dress up however they want, scary, cool. There's a lot of people that go specifically for the horror aspect. And then, of course, it's just, you get candy. So, yeah, candy, heck yeah. <laughs> sweet sweets are always nice. But just seeing, like, the creativity in people's, like, costumes and all of the cool stuff there was yeah. really cool to see. Well, like, and that candy can be stream food for, like, months. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you, you say months, but I'd get one of the big bags of candy, and I'd probably go through it in, like, a week. So, Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I, would, I would just eat all of that. Okay. Well, and I'm curious on the next question. If you have any time outside of VR streaming and what you normally do, do you have any favorite movies, TV shows, or TV series that you're into? I don't watch a huge amount of TV or movies. Uh, generally, I tend to enjoy to like play the media rather than sit back and watch it. Okay. Um, I did, you know, watch a lot of the Marvel stuff and um, had a good time with that for a long time. Haven't watched that since probably the Infinity War stuff that happened with Marvel. Um, but a lot of what I will spend my time doing outside of gaming um, is just a lot of editing. So okay. if I'm not actively playing a game on stream or streaming, usually I'm editing what I did play so that I can make a video out of it or do something there. Okay. Um, I do own a motorcycle as well. So anytime I get a chance oh, to go fun. out and just like ride around on the motorcycle, usually I'll be doing that. All right. Well, now that we've got quite a few people here in chat, I just want to uh, give you a list of names that have been popping in saying hello. So we've got Darhan, uh, Devil's Reaper, Barbed Wire, Creative Anxiety. Thank you, Dan Dan, for that raid. Anybody that's popped in from that raid, Zico Blade, thank you guys for showing up. On the other side, um, we're running on Facebook and Twitch, and you guys, I do not have a chat open right now because I want to focus in on Sumachi, the man of, man of the hour. Mark Hurst, hello. Laz, hello. Uh, Miss Misery, hello. And I know a bunch of you have been popping in and liking the stream, and I've missed your names, but I know you're there because I see you there. Um, so thank you for joining me with Sumachi here in his interview of Pop One. We're learning yeah. a little bit about him, and I'm going to find out, Sumachi, do you prefer drinking coffee, energy drink, tea, or soda? Um, not out of all of those options, not coffee. <laughs> for some reason i just could never get the taste of coffee unless i put a lot of sweet sugar in it okay. um like a lot of cream and sugar uh, like i would you probably maybe go manage with a frappuccino yeah like okay. frappuccinos and cappuccinos are all right um i would probably say out of all of those options tea is my favorite um and then energy drinks after that Okay. There, every once in a while, there's something that just stands out. Like for soda, Mountain Dew Voltage is just amazing, and it's a re really great drink mixer. Uh, drink mixer as well. So if I get like vodka or something, I can mix it with uh, Mountain Dew Voltage. So. Okay. 
Uh, and then let's talk about the other games that you do play outside of Pop One. You've mentioned several of them. Uh, if you can, in your mind right now, list out all the games that you like to play or stream to share content. Okay, yeah. So my team competitively, um, we started in Pavlov. We moved into Pop One. We've done Contractors. We've played Vale. Um, we play Breachers, and then there's an upcoming game called X8, and those are going to be the, all of the ones that we're going to be heavily um, competing in. Okay. Um, usually with the com competition games, it's a lot of where is the best and where, where's the best prize pool. Usually that's the, the main thing. Yeah. Um, BR, because it's so small, it's hard to just pick one and devote all of your time to when the prize pool's um, only a couple hundred dollars, especially when <laughs> that's kind of like what I'm trying to do as my living is to play games to make content and to do all of that. So if something will only offer a reward of like $200, it's also not as attractive to other people who might want to get invested as well. So yeah. if someone wants to play VR games um, and they want to get really invested in like the competition side of things, more people are going to pick the one that gives the highest prize pool rather than one that yep. only gives like a hundred bucks. <laughs> Absolutely. In terms of games that I just <laughs> like to play in general, um, there's a racing game called Omega Pilot, which is just ultra fast VR racing. Um, every time someone stops by the street when I'm playing that, they just think that like, how do you not get motion sick playing this? Um, but that game is really fun. I play a lot of Beat Saber. And then I spend a lot of time in VR chat as well, um, just hanging out with friends or drinking. Okay. Uh, what's the game that you were playing last night with the uh, the rafts in the ocean? Yeah, so that's a flat screen game called Raft. <laughs> okay. Um, and it's a there's a lot of VR mods that are coming out for um, just different VR games. So there's like Half Life Two VR. There's Raft. You can play Valheim in VR. You can play like Deep Rock Galactic, Risk of Rain Two. And there's a um, Discord server that has modders that are able to get motion controls and get VR headsets working for that game. So they are completely re refined flat screen games that okay. modders have gotten working in VR. And one of the main things that VR struggles with is like how much content is in your game. Like a lot of the VR startups or VR companies that make games are smaller companies. You know, they don't have 100 people like Call of Duty or 300 people like Overwatch, whatever the case. It's usually just like teams of like one to 30 people who are trying to make a VR game. Usually it's pretty small, like under 10 people. Um, so usually there's not a huge amount of content in the game. Like there's enough to be like, oh yeah, that's a pretty decent game. Um, can't wait till they add more stuff. But when you grab a flat screen game and you pull it into VR and you get it working in VR, it already has like AAA levels of content in it. So as long as you can get the motion controls and everything working, usually it has like a long time you can play that game. One of the very first games and one of the reasons I got into VR in the first place was a game called Elite Dangerous, which is a flat screen game um, where you fly around a spaceship and it's like almost like space trucking. You're like you can do bounty <laughs> hunts and things like that as well. Cool. Um, but when I was going for my pilot's license, I found that a lot of um, pilot training does flight simulation gear. And they consider that, depending on how intensive the gear is, as actual decent training. It's like, oh, I'll get a flight sim gear and I'll be able to play these games in VR. That was the whole reason I got VR was to uh, help myself get better at flying. And so I pl okay. played a lot of time at Elite Dangerous and just like flying around spaceships. Okay. Well, we're going to play the weapon loadout game. So I usually set us up in a room that is a uh, battle royale, but this one is TDM. So it's a little different style because I don't believe we're, we're going to be able to collect backpacks, but I'm going to start the match and uh, roam about and pick up your favorite weapons, the ones that would be in a perfect uh, world you run upon, and this is your loadout. I'm going to try and guess what your loadout is, and we're going to meet up and uh, put our items in front of each other and see how close I got, okay? Okay. All right, here all right, we go. So all, 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 of the, uh, are all of the weapons in this map, then? They should be. I have customized it so that everything is available. So we're going to see, because I haven't got to play this one. Uh, and if you can't find it, then we'll just chat about that weapon. <laughs> okay. And is it for, like, competitive or just for fun? Which loadout is it? Just for fun. Something okay. I would be watching on stream. Gotcha. Okay, so... 
with the ones that we think uh, Sumachi plays with. I'm going to be terrible at this, you guys. This is just going to be terrible. I don't really know. <laughs> okay, so we have open chat and there are backpacks I just saw, so we should be able to get a few more items than uh, just the three in normal deathmatch. Can you hear me, Sumachi? Mm -hmm. Perfect, okay. All right, this includes shields and heals. So uh, if your preference is cans or bananas or none at all, that's uh, totally your call. One thing as we are running around collecting everything, I wanted to point out more cowbell likes to, uh, like I said in the last interview, put a cowbell somewhere hidden in all of their maps. There it is. Okay. All right, so I have all of my backpacks. Now I've got to pick the right guns. And heels. Oh, there's none up Let's go over here. And uh, I wanted to showcase this map because uh, it's a really nice mimic of your guys' uh, original TDM map that everybody was really sad to lose. When Sandbox hit and all the TDM maps went to private customs, this one was made with a little extras like tree farms and things like that. So I wanted to showcase this for you guys to see. It's not all lost. You can still find it. All right. I have potentially one more that I'm looking for. all those likes guys I appreciate the shares on the Facebook side and you guys hanging out in Twitch sharing the stream as we're here to interview Sumachi I think I might be out of options here I'm not finding very many things left how about you Sumachi yeah I think I found what I can okay all right let's meet over here uh, let's do the bridge does that sound good the bridge yeah near the front Yep, on my way. Cool. As he's on his way, I just want to show you guys that these amazing little minions made by more cowbell. Nice job. These guys are great. Their skins from Population One. The details are fabulous. All right. We're going to see how absolutely miserable I did because um, I don't think I focus on your uh, weapon loadout when I watch you. I'm in awe when I watch you. And most of the time I'm watching you on Beat Saber or the rafting game. So as I'm doing this, I'm like, oh, crap, this is going to be bad. <laughs> so um, don't nod in shame. Uh, the first item that I was guessing was uh, that you carried a cyber blade. Yes or no? <laughs> So in a normal lobby, um, if I can, I would hold on to my knife. Okay. But I would say that, yeah, um, I use the sword a lot The um, for all of the seasons up until the most recent um, update. It's a little bit weaker, this most recent update, just because of how quick everything else kills you. Yeah. Um, but sometimes I'll still hold on to my knife just because it's a fun weapon to use and it's um, <laughs> fun to get try, try to go for clips with the knife. For sure. Okay. I picked a banana for heels. Do you carry bananas yep. with you? Whew, yep. Okay. Feeling good about that one. And I also forgot TDM, your items disappeared too. <laughs> okay. I went with nades. This I didn't feel very confident on, but I was like, ah, if he if he carries nades, they'll be in there. If not, then it'll probably be another gun. Do you carry nades? Um, I usually either do two frags or if I could find one, I'll take a rocket launcher just because it's more fun, in my That's opinion. That's my favorite one. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, rocket, I would say, is what I would take for my utility usually. Okay. Here's where you're going to nod in shame. Please don't make me feel too bad. Okay, so for guns, I know this is wrong. I, I went with an AKM. You have one of those with you? <laughs> I do. Woohoo! Oh, my gosh, that made me feel so, so much better. Yeah. Yeah, no, so usually I do. I rotate the guns that I use a lot. Um, mm -hmm. The main ones would be AK, uh, FAL, and the MP5 for my like mid or close range guns. Okay. Uh, I also pulled an op, hoping that maybe you'd have one of those with you. I have seen you. Yep, yep. carry an op. Okay. I'm not doing too bad. Um, yeah. 
I, I left one of my spots open. I was going to look for like either shields or soda, uh, the, the cans of shields. I would have probably picked up uh, the shakers. Do you have shakers with you? You went with cans. Okay. So I take both. Okay. I take two guns and then I actually take both sodas and shakers. And then depending on what's happening in the fight, um, I'll use whichever one is available or like which one's better for that instance accordingly. If I'm like pretty far away and I have the time to use a shaker, I'll do that. But if I'm mid fight and need something to happen um, and still need to be able to move really fast, then I'll do sodas. Okay. Well, there's, there's one more part of the weapons loadout game that has to take place. Uh. I have to kill Sinatra. Dang. <laughs> The only time in my lifetime. <laughs> I had one more thing in my inventory, but uh, we'll never know what it is. Nope, we'll talk about that in just a second. <laughs> nope, nope, it's gone. It's gone forever. It's gone. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, back to the weapons. What else did you have in your weapon loadout? I had a harmonica. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm not a fan of the harmonica. Tell me why you, you like them. So anytime there's a utility option that's fun or silly to use, um, I tend to just pick it up and try to figure out which ways it breaks the meta or what it changes. Okay. Um, anytime there's a new item, so like rockets or whatever the newest thing is, usually I like to play around with that a lot. Because okay. um, a lot of people won't use it. Like a lot of people feel like the rocket's underpowered or a lot of people, you know, or like the harmonica doesn't do damage. But I feel like there's a lot of instances that people don't, look farther into because they're just so focused on like what does the most damage or what am I the most familiar with yeah so things like the harmonica are just more fun for me and when I come to play population one my main objective is to just enjoy it as much as possible okay. um, and to have a good time that's where we get into like a weird conversation too because anytime I come to play this game I'm really invested in um, either doing stuff for stream or just hanging out with friends. And when people like watch my stream or run into me in lobby a lot, they'll say like, oh, Sumachi, why do you never play solo? And I've recently played solo a lot. If you have stopped by my stream, like I've been doing just a lot of solo queue. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the main reasons for that is just, I like to play to hang out with friends. And I like to not have to worry about someone, what someone on my team will say on stream. So just, you know, having people who are already there and people that I trust is usually the reason that I go for there. I like that. Okay. But I have been doing a lot more solo recently, especially with the addition of free to play. I feel like there's a lot of players who um, would uh, appreciate that, especially with, you know, sometimes the caliber of players that they'll be against. Mm -hmm. Trying to yeah. even the playing field a little bit. I, I think that I would probably uh, consider not playing Pop 1 if I ran into you week one and just got, like, absolutely crushed. I'd be like, um, there's no hope for me in this game. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's um, it's a big hurdle for people to try to get over when they're put against, like when the matchmaking isn't working um, super properly. Yeah. I think recently it's been a little bit better. Um, and with the huge influx of newer players, like it's able to queue them with each other a lot. Mm -hmm. I do have a YouTube video I updated or uploaded um, recently last month where I was able to cast a um, like brand new player lobby where it actually got backfilled with bots a little bit. Oh, and that was really okay. fun to watch. But so there are new player lobbies that are actually filled with bots if they are like brand, brand new, which I think is really important. Okay. And so you mentioned that. And now that makes sense to me because I was in a couple, when the last update hit, I was in a couple matches where people were literally just kind of standing there robotically looking. And I'm betting that I probably ended up in one of those because it was so easy. And I was like, how did I just take out a lobby? I'm not that good of a player. What just happened? <laughs> I think, I think that's another thing that people need to give themselves more credit for. There's a lot of people who say, like, I'm not that good of a player. But I think to keep in mind of, like, where the average VR... Like, there's a huge difference between average player, decent player, um, high-level player, and then even, like, comp player. Like, the skill difference between all of those is just ridiculous. Um, mm -hmm. Like, a brand new player, if you go and watch my video, it's, like, people, like, you know, climbing the rungs of the ladder, like, individually, because they think that's all <laughs> yep. they can grab. Yeah. Um, they, they struggle with, like, the reloads a little bit. Um, like, like the, the difference between all of the different tiers of players is pretty ridiculous. And I'd say that anybody that's played for a decent amount um, and knows the mechanics pretty, pretty well is a above-average player. Okay. So. Yes. 
you guys heard it from Sumachi from now on. It's going to be Tipsy Trixie Show, the above average player. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk more about these weapons. Do you have any weapon secrets that you'd like to share that you have found? There's a, a couple of secrets or like a couple of things that each gun is the best at. Um, and there's a couple of tricks for the guns or for, I can't share a couple of them. Like there's a couple of nade tricks as well. Um, the main ones that I could probably share that you guys might enjoy. Um, I think, yeah. Um, we can find an op really quick. Okay. See if one appears. My gameplay is a little bit Here's more one. slow than a... Perfect. My gameplay is a little bit more slow than a lot of people, too. Um, like, if you watch my streams, I do a lot more... Kind of, like, play a little bit farther back and don't do anything too crazy. Yeah. Um, I don't do a lot of head peeking. Anytime I can avoid head peeking, I'll, like, run out in the open and pick the fight instead, just because head peeking is... <laughs> Very a very boring way to play for me. I understand like people playing to win and everything. That's that's what's strong, um, but it is not the most fun for me. Um, the so the op it has a with no scopes. There's a way to try to make more of your no scopes hit that I don't know if most people are familiar with. Okay. Um, so if we go over to this wall over here, we have bullet holes appear on it. Perfect. Okay, so the op, when you're going for a no-scope, will always shoot about 30% off of where you're aiming, regardless okay. of, um, like, it, not necessarily dependent on direction, but it'll always shoot and make, like, a circle. So if I keep no-scoping, it'll make this circle on this wall, but you'll notice it'll never hit in the middle of the circle. Okay, yeah. So this circle that the op shoots in, it will never hit in the middle of when you're actually shooting at it. So if you're going for a no-scope with an op, you always want to make sure you're, like, aiming down here so that the circle's, like, on the side. You essentially yeah. want to gamble on which side that the op is going to no-scope on. Okay. And then gamble that way for trying to hit no-scopes with the op. Okay. Thank you. I, I don't think I would ever uh, hit a no-scope, but I have tried uh, just messing around. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, so if you ever go for it, try to, like, it's weird because you want to not aim at them to try to be able to hit them. It's really okay. weird. Okay, okay. All right, any uh, others? There's, there's one for you. Okay. Um, yeah, I know a few tricks. Um, there's a couple of different tricks in the game that you can do um, that get, a lot of them get ignored or, like, not enough people know about them to be able to have to change them. Okay. Um, but there's been a lot of tricks that have been in the game for a long period of time. Like, I know some people will see me do this one occasionally and wonder what's going on. Oh, wow. <laughs> how did you <laughs> so do that? There, yeah, I'm not going to say how to do that okay, one because the okay. less people that know, the better. Exactly. <laughs> but there, there are you. a <laughs> couple of different tricks to um, make people jump around or to... Um, just little tricks. I think map knowledge. There's a lot of different spots in the map. I'm sure, like, the billboard in Summit, you can get behind that, and that's a really good hiding spot. Yeah. So there's I a noticed. lot of, like, really good hiding spots or map spots. I'm sad that they removed the jump um, the jump glitch or the bounce glitch. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, I haven't been able to use it on PC VR for, like, two years anyways, but I'm sad that they removed it from Quest just because I thought it was, like, a fun little addition. And um, are you talking about the one where you there. pull yourself up to it and you go up in the air? Yep, that's the one. Okay, okay. But I okay. really enjoy things like that um, because they add, like, little hidden knowledge where if you played the game a long time, like, you'll, you'll know little tricks. Yeah, and I don't little feel Easter like eggs. Was... <laughs> yeah, just little fun things. And because, okay. again, I don't take the game, like, hyper competitively, um, I enjoy those, like, fun things um, more than the balance. Okay. So. Uh, least favorite weapon. Which one do you just distaste <laughs> um i like the mk but i really cannot use it right now like it had one week where it was good um like last summer maybe when like it had before the, the locked and loaded update i uh, know <laughs> oh okay 
<laughs> Wait, which glitch? Which glitch is that? Where you can just hold it down and it just kept firing. Hey! Oh yeah, <laughs> that one was that one was funny. Um, there's a couple of different things for the MK um, okay. that have gone through. Like there there was a full auto glitch that people were abusing a while ago. Um, and if you get the timing down for the MK, I feel like it's really strong. But the recoil, since the locked and loaded update, is just too strong okay. for it. So I just really don't like using it. Um, okay. the, sh the shotguns in general, I I know if people watch my stream, they probably won't see me use the DT very op often. And that's not because I hate the DT or like I practiced it a decent amount to reload it like somewhat fast. My issue with the DT is I've probably broken more controllers trying to use the DT <laughs> than most other guns in the game. I don't want to break my controllers anymore, so. Okay, all right. Um, all right, so how can I kill Sumachi? What is your weakness in this game or just a small sliver of hope that I might have when I see you? Hey, listen! It's changed a lot um, with what is been working like it used to be pin dropping like I used to die to pin dropping every time it would happen mm -hmm. but then I got pin dropped so many times that I just <laughs> look up all the time like I'm I have PTSD from it so I'll just <laughs> always be looking up so I don't feel like that's as viable anymore okay. um I feel like if you want to kill me you just let me um let me essentially make the mistakes myself like I'll often try to think too hard about like what enemies should be doing that I'll be like, all right, here's, if I was a competitive player, here's what I would be doing or where I would be ah, going. And then analytical. someone will surprise me by just, someone will surprise me by just like having five health and re-peaking me and then killing me. I'm like, why yeah. would you re-peak if you had five health? That doesn't make <laughs> sense. Like, I think too hard about things a lot of the time. Okay. Um, if, I, if I hit someone for like 180, I expect them to like go hide behind a wall and heal, not to mm -hmm. like re-peak and keep shooting. Um, and it's safer to do, you know, go hide behind the wall, but I often die because I like expect people to do like the best decision instead right. of like, okay. go uh, crazy, so. do you organize your weapon wheel? Um, I wish it was easier to do whenever I have the DT, I will put it in my top slot. Okay. Um, but other than that, I don't organize it. And I just kind of remember where the things are. And okay. I wish there was an easier way to organize it. Um, Agreed. That was yep. a little bit quicker. I also wish there was a way to lock stuff. Because one of the things that I run into playing on um, PC VR is like mid-fight, if I'm walking over a banana or something, yeah. and I'm like gripping my gun, it'll like drop whatever I'm holding for whatever's on the yes. ground below me. Yes. Or like if I'm going for a sword swipe on someone, it'll drop the sword for whatever's underneath them, and I'll end up dying there. Um, that so it would be cool to lock <laughs> lock stuff, but no, I say often I don't uh, organize my weapon wheel too much. Okay. Uh, you've indicated this a little bit, but how do you pick your teammates? Will it ever include noobs, running solo, or playing with squeakers? Yeah, I have recently done a lot of solo queue. Um, so the past couple of times that I've been on... Um, I'd say for the past like month and a half, I've done a lot of solos where I just boot up, um, play a lot of solos with the new player. Ever since it went free to play, um, I've done a lot of solos to try to help teach those people and to try to see what like the general skill level is. And mm -hmm. also because a lot of people would always say like you only ever play in a squad. So I'm trying to get away from that idea as well, because I understand it is a lot harder to play like. Being able to squat up of three is a very, very large mountain for any new player to conquer. Not only are they dealing with players that aren't their skill level, but then they're dealing with three players who are way mm -hmm. above their skill level. And I feel like that is something that is basically impossible for them to be able to deal with. Um, so, so by solo queuing, I'm able to um, try to help even the playing field there a little bit if I get put on their team. Yeah. Um, the things that'll keep me playing with people, I play a lot with my teammates. Um, if teammates from other game come and hang out, like I'll play with them. People that just generally have good vibes and um, I can have good conversation with, especially on stream, um, is usually what I go for. Okay. And um, then in terms of playing, like continuously playing with people, I'd say that the people that have the the best attitude um, and are just like genuinely pretty chill people um okay. or good to hang out with sounds good i'm not i'm not like super competitive in terms of like winning this because there's there's not really any money or anything tied behind it yeah. so if i run into who's like 
you know, we need to win or super like super like bummed out about losing or anything. Usually I won't play with them. Like, of course, like if you have a close match, you're like bummed out about it. Um, <laughs> people that take it like really seriously, usually I, I don't spend too much time playing with them just because it's it, not the same vibe as how I usually play. Okay. Uh, when I first saw you in a lobby and I, I finally knew who you were, I didn't even say hi to you because I was like, oh my God, it's Sumachi. I was like, pop one starstruck. <laughs> 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 but you guys he's such a chill guy he's so easy to talk to so i don't know why i was like that but uh, i think it was because i was like one day i'm gonna interview sumachi oh my god i can't even talk to him <laughs> so stupid. here we are yeah okay this was uh one of the questions that i was super excited to ask about your favorite skin in pop one but first i want to talk about the skin that you currently have and where this came from yeah, so this and is the Platinum the Brood answer. skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is the Platinum Brood skin. This is the one that came from the um, Invitational Tournament that mm -hmm. Big Box hosted um, right after Season 1 when the game came out. So they hosted a tournament where they invited um, eight of the top-ranked teams through the Arc League and through like the community-run tournaments and invited those teams to play, and the winners got um, the skin. So me and my teammates of Vortex, it was I am Jert, Boyko, and then Komodo Wagon. There's four of us, mm -hmm. and we all have this skin, and we are the only people in the game um, that have this skin. Yep, yep. Um, I just want to say something about this skin because I'm a very artistic person. And as I'm standing here talking to you and stuff, I've seen two different faces appear to me on the front of your skin. Um, I'm going to get awkwardly close if that's okay. So... Right now I can see a monkey, which is these two eyes, and here's the nose, and here's the mouth. Okay, chat, do you guys see that? And then the other one I see is this, like, almost like owl-like creature. Here's the eyes, here's the nose, and here's the mouth. Do you guys see that? You have, like, the coolest skin because I see all these things morphed inside of it. <laughs> Just nice. sorry. Sorry, I can uh, be a little weird sometimes, but, like, I think it's super cool. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'll need to uh, I'll need to have Jert or someone wear it so that I can look for those as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh my god, there's faces inside of your skin. All right, so what is your favorite <laughs> skin that Pop One has put out? Um, I really like the werewolf skin. I wish it had a tail. That's all I want in Pop One right now is I just wish that the werewolf skin had a tail. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I think that would be really cool. But the werewolf skin is probably my favorite. Okay. I used the, um, the vampire for a long time, too. Okay. Now, Sumachi, you're into tales. Uh, this is an alternate question I don't typically ask in my interviews. Uh, you consider yourself a furry, is that true? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about what that means, because a lot of people are saying, what is a furry? Yeah, so a furry is just someone who likes... Um, it could be dressing up as an animal. It could just be they like tails and ears. It's just anybody that enjoys that style of art. If you like, um, like there's different kind of like levels of how furry people consider themselves. Like there's like cat boys. You're like, oh, like they just have ears and the tail. So that would be, I would say that that's a level of furry. And then there's the people that dress up in like full outfits and things. Okay. Um, and they'll go to conventions. It's just a really nice welcoming community of people who um, just have a hobby that they all enjoy and just like dressing up. Um, cool. I would say the closest comparison to them is Comic-Con. Um, like if you have people that like superheroes or they like comic books or whatever the case, it, it's the exact same sort of thing um, mm -hmm. as that where people just have characters that they think are really cool. They want to dress up as them. The only difference is the characters that the people think are cool are usually ones that they themselves have made rather than having been created by um you know, a comic book writer or a sure. um, TV series director or anything like that. So it's essentially like Comic-Con, but for your own character. And just about all of them are animal focused. Mm -hmm. Mine is cybernetic. So it's like a mixture between like cyberpunk, like futuristic and animal. Um, but all of the furry stuff is just essentially um, humanized animals. So, mm -hmm. you know, they, they have all of the, um, usually they're bipedal, um, and they have all of the consciousness and ability to like talk to each other. It's just humanized animals. Okay. 
And I actually have a 13-year-old daughter who considers herself a furry, um, or she wavers Ooh. in and out between wanting to be a knot. Um, so yeah, I just, I think I appreciate that about you. Your avatar, is that uh, kind of a depiction of what you're talking about, what you're more like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so I have, um, I have about 13 different characters that I change between. And they are just like, however I want to show myself. Like, if you've been around my stream for a while, you'll see me rotate between different characters or different avatars. Mm -hmm. And they're also just a lot of like what I think is cool or what I want to show on stream. Like, I just want something like super cool today or I want, you know, something that's in armor or something along those lines. Yeah. Um, he... A lot of younger people, I'd say under the age of like 18 or 17, have a lot of negative connotations with furry. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like online stuff of everybody's just like kill the furries or like there, there's like a <laughs> war that goes on online. I've seen so this, there's gonna be, yes. Yeah, so anybody that's online um, just has a lot against furries, but I, for the most part, I'd say that people often just hate what they don't quite understand. Mm -hmm. um, it's just it's just like a hobby that people get together and we're, we're all trying to get through life and not be so sad and yep. fluffy things make some people not so sad. So <laughs> there, it is. I mean, there are people that dress like pirates every day. There are like you're <laughs> saying, like there are people that do Comic Con. There's I mean, there's a flavor for everyone. Hey, and so, listen. yeah, um, I appreciate that about you. I think it's really cool. And the fact that you're um, very proud about it is something that I think is awesome. So thank you. Yeah, it's the same as anybody like in race cars, as anybody like in martial arts. They just people just have hobbies that they really enjoy and yeah. want to back up, and and the community and surrounding them is that. what they enjoy. Yeah. All right. Uh, back to some pop one questions. Uh, are you willing to share your current stats with us? Um, I, if I remember them, um, they haven't changed too much recently. I just have so many games plays that played that my win rate doesn't change very much anymore. <laughs> um, I think they're all pretty rounded out though. So I hit 10,000 games played, um, a, about a month ago, I believe. Congrats. I'm currently at a 74% win rate and 5.5 5 kills per hey, game. I listen. Very good. Um, I'm at a 21% uh, win rate, so yay. <laughs> That's good. A, a, a lot of people, when they play Battle Royales, they're, like, they think that they can get like a lot of wins. But just remember, like if you're above the average amount you should be winning, like you're, you're way above average. I think the average amount you're supposed to win is like 17%. Okay. Um, just because there's six teams, right? So you That's just divide 100 by however many teams they are. So, yeah, so if you are like... I feel like so many people come into this game like not having a good time if they're not winning. But one of the biggest things you guys need to remember is like there's six different teams and if the matchmaking is working right, you should only be winning one in six times technically. Okay. So that makes sense. A lot of people look at their stats and they're like, Oh, my stats, you know, I only have twenty percent, like it's not very high. It's like that's above what the like average is, like you are Vast, vastly outclassing the majority of people who play the game. So sure. a lot of people will like compare their stats and like talk down to themselves because it's not as good as someone else. Um, but just be aware of like where the average is. I think it's like super important to being able to enjoy stuff. Okay. Uh, hello to Red Legend, Shauna, uh, Hippie, Common Ground, Ryan, that's Little Red. Um, hello to... Uh, let's see here. Mad Daz. Hey, it's me, Mario. Barlis. Uh, Jeezy. Fox fan. You guys are awesome. Thank you for being here. I know there's more of you. Vilto. Um, I know there's more of you popping in saying hello. I have chat turned off so that I can focus on Sumachi here. So I appreciate you guys, all the likes and the shares that are happening in there. Getting back to Sumachi. Uh, hey. Let's talk about rank placement. When it existed, did you like the rank, rank placement uh, that we had in place, and would you like to see it return? When it was in, it gave me a really big reason to come back to the game and keep playing it. Um, I think ranked and grinds are some of the main two things that VR games are lacking right now. Um, it's just the ability to want to get people to come back to your game to keep playing. Um, 
Population one does have the experience grind where everybody was grinding towards the gold PJ. And that was mm -hmm. a huge grind for a lot of people. Now, before they had level 61, hey, 62, listen. 65, before they had all those, um, a lot of people, when they hit level 60, they stopped playing the game. Mm -hmm. Like they would play hey, a couple of games listen. in their gold jacket and they would just be like, okay, well, there's like, I'm not grinding anything anymore. I mm -hmm. don't really want to play this game. But I think that's underestimated on how important it is to have some reason or some grind to get experience to have people coming back. That's why they added level 61 and all of those. When ranked was around, I liked how it was set up, but I don't think the player base was big enough to deal with it. Mm -hmm. That was one of the biggest things because it would be a lot of people, um, you know, putting putting grand bananas in lobbies with early ranked players. Like it was trying to yeah. get people into matches quickly it's rather than getting it to people into balanced <laughs> matches. And I think For it sure. still does that. Um, but something that I noticed when ranked was going on was that the amount of people that would remove people from their friends list because they weren't good performers, that like that demotivated me a lot or that like turned me off from that idea a lot because I didn't realize how like judgmental people would be towards the stats or how important it was to win for a lot of those people. Yeah. So I personally enjoyed ranked a lot. Um, the thing that I wish we would get at some point again is solos because I thought solos was hilarious and I loved prox <laughs> chat. Proximity chat was just completely hilarious for me. Um, Agreed. I'd love to see just more cues overall in population one and hopefully the new influx of players from the free to play will allow us to be able to do that. For sure. Okay. Uh, what do you think of Sandbox? Sandbox, I feel like, is a really good resource to make maps, to let people play the game. Like, I can actually boot up Sandbox sitting down. Like, if I play Population 1, I'm always standing. But mm -hmm. or, uh, Sandbox allows me to actually just, like, sit down and just, like, chill and still be in-game and hang out. So I think it's really good for that. Being the creativity of the sort of maps that people can make um, mm -hmm. is really cool. And... Um, I think it's a really cool addition because anybody that wants to play the Battle Royale or wants to play the normal mode is going to be playing that mode. The only thing that Sandbox will do is bring in new players who find the Sandbox stuff interesting or like they want to make maps or like I feel like the communities are still like it's not seeping into one another. Um, okay. You'll still get a lot of players who will come in who are like, oh, yeah, Sandbox and all that stuff exists and they'll try out the Battle Royale mode. Mm -hmm. Overall, I think it's really good for the game's health. Um I don't know which direction Pop One is going in terms of where they're going with future stuff, though. I don't know if it's going to be, you know, they're trying to make it as building blocks as possible where you could do literally anything. I don't know if they yeah. want to focus on Battle Royale. Um, I personally would like if they became more focused on one thing, but I know how exclusive that tends to be. And VR is such a small market where it's really hard to say that you know we can do this and still be a successful game company yeah. like we've seen co contractors opened up their their game to mod so you can play like star wars um star wars in contract you can play team fortress 2 and contractors um, a lot of these games are opening up to mods because they realize that making a game that's you know outer strike in vr or fortnite in vr is so specific that it doesn't attract enough people because the vr player base just isn't there quite yet yeah. I think it's good for the overall health of the game. Okay. Uh, you've alluded to this a little bit. What do you think about free-to-play Pop 1? I think free-to-play is really good. Um, I have thought this game is, should be free-to-play for a long time. Um, and with free-to-play comes the ability to add other modes or add, adds the ability to maybe even bring, bring ranked back or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really good for the state of the game and allows them to try out other options. And then they can figure out, like the developers can figure out what's worked and kind of like build off that a little bit. But I think free-to-play is really good for the game. Okay. Uh, do you get involved in playtesting? Um, every once in a while, I will get involved in playtesting. I, I wasn't a part of the sandbox testing until a couple of weeks before it was um, released. So because I play on PC VR, this is another thing that people underestimate a lot. If you play on PC VR, usually you're the last person to get invited to any sort of playtest. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I didn't know sandbox was going to be a thing until a couple of weeks before it happened. And that's just because... 
the game is made for Quest. It is not made for PC VR. It is optimized for Quest. 99% of the player base is Quest. Um, it is made specifically for the Quest platform. And mm -hmm. dev, the developers want to make sure it works on the Quest platform. So when it comes to um, play tests, usually we're the last ones invited. Um, but we will, you know, whenever they happen, usually I'll browse around a little bit. I don't get invited to all of them, though. Like, I, I don't have some weird connection with the devs or anything that allows me to figure out stuff before any of you guys. I just have my <laughs> best guess of where the game will go based on what I know and their habits. Um, I do talk to some of the devs every once in a while about, like, why they made certain changes, but I don't have any extra information that anybody else ha has or anything. Okay. okay. Uh, when you jump into a game, do you warm up? Do you jump in straight into uh, squads? Do you use the training park, hit TDM? Like, what do you do when you turn the game on and you get started? Yeah, because my style of gameplay, I'm not necessarily going for grinding out and winning. Usually I'm playing Population 1 to hang out with chat or to hang out with teammates or friends. Um, so for that reason, usually I don't do a lot of warming up. It's not important whether or not I win the game necessarily or anything. It's just spending time with people or spending time with chat or in the game. So I don't do a whole lot of warming up, but it is super important if you're trying to like work on certain mechanics or if your main objective is to win, to do those things for sure. Okay. Uh, that's Pop One Baby saying hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, when you jump into the game and you're on the platform, you have the choice to hot drop or to pod. When do you make that decision? Yeah, so I will hot drop or pod depending on the platform. Um, it is completely based on wh like where I spawn on the platform and which platform it is. Uh -huh. If I spawn in Armory on the right platform and have the option to jump onto the nines, I will always jump onto the, the nine boxes just because I know I can be the first one there. So anytime it is a, like, I'll hit the ground first, I always hot drop there. Okay. But if someone would land on the ground before me and can, if anybody can ever shoot me before I can hit the ground, um, usually I don't jump. Okay. If I land at the same time as someone else, sure, I'm fine with that. But I try to just minimize the amount of choices I can make that would get me killed for not being able to do anything. <laughs> I like to make bad choices a lot and uh, hot drop in bad places. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally me. All right. You can wait, buddy. Okay. Let's talk about rage quitting. Sumachi, are you a rage quitter? Yes or no? Um, I would say no. I've only quit out of probably 20, may maybe 10 or 20 games total ever in Pop 1. Um, and usually those were instances of I got stuck inside of a rock or <laughs> I had people that were specifically like stream sniping me or something that I just wanted to avoid. Yeah. Um, like if they're going for some specific type of gratification and they're, um, you know, on top of the tower, just pinpointing where I'm at. And I recognize the games from multiple lobbies. Like sometimes I'll try to avoid that and I'll even put little buffers on my stream to try to dodge them. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I, I don't really re rage quit at all from any of the matches I've played. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's talk about streamers uh, in terms of population one. Who would be your favorite streamer to watch? And if you don't want to list just one, you can list a couple. Do you have some favorite streamers? Yeah, so I watch, um, anytime I'm up in the morning, I watch Jansen Fox. He's one of the my favorite people to watch. Um, and one of the reasons for that is because he has redeems on his stream that will get his team screwed. Like, he is there for chat. He is there for the community. He's yeah, not there he's to win totally or anything. not there for his teammates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I really like Jansen, um, and I think he's really fun. And he doesn't take it too seriously either. Yeah. Um, Rad Fox, I like watching Rad Fox, and mm -hmm. um, all of her tutorials and things online are really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then anytime Scanter's online, just seeing him run around with the ops, really cool to watch. I've been trying to lock him into an interview. You should just be like, hey, Scanter, nudge, nudge. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, also, some of my favorites as well. Good choices. Uh, let's talk about who you think the best Pop One player is today. Um, 
I don't know if I it's a weird question because I am not hyper invested in like the competitive side of things. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure who like what is happening, like who's who's just running over people with the new meta or anything. Okay. Um, I would say that the best players that I know of would be probably Scanter. Um, okay. Scanter, Red is really, really good player as well. Like those two players are just crazy good. There's a couple of people, um, Pink Ponage, really good player, has some really good tutorials online as well. But there's a lot of players that have like a lot of skill, but because it's a team-based game, it's really hard to pinpoint like who's the best player overall when, you know, Scanter might be the best opera in the game, but Pink Ponage is going to be like way better decisions. So like things mm -hmm. like that. Um, so I don't know if it's really <laughs> possible to narrow down the best player, just who's the best at the best mechanics. Okay. Uh, where do you think Big Box should focus their development in Population 1? I am not sure because I don't know what direction they're going right now. I don't know if they're trying to more heavily focus on Sandbox or if they're going to add more stuff to the map. I don't know the limitations of the Quest software. I know a lot of people are like, well, Big Box should add moving water. They should add the train moving in train station or in Metro and like all of these things. But there's so many limitations that are based on like how powerful the hardware is where like the Quest would explode if they did that. <laughs> so I don't know like what the, the limitations are in that manner. Um, I would love to see some basic things. I would love to have finger tracking for my controllers because I do have mm -hmm. finger tracker, tracking on my index controllers, but I can't do anything like that. Um, I would like to see another movement mechanic that would just let you get around the map faster or just add some level of advanced gameplay that doesn't exist right now because that's something that I really... You need to make a game that's easy to understand but then really hard to master and I don't think Pop 1 has too much really hard to master stuff. It's more just like knowing where you can aim to like make sure you, your head peak is the safest. But there's no like really crazy advanced mechanics. The The biggest one would be building, but even building got um, kind of nerfed at the latest patch because every weapon got stronger. So everything can tear, tear down builds a lot faster, which yeah. I think is really good for new players. All of these um, veteran players were able to run into a lobby and if they had like 50 builds, they would not die because mm -hmm. they would get in situations where they'd kill someone, but they'd be able to like squeak their way out or rotate around. But now because all of the weapons are so much more powerful, new players actually have a chance to kill um, veteran players. And I think that's one of the main reasons for the latest patch. But I think these patches we're going to see too. here are going to be a lot more focused on making new players feel like they have a chance, making new players feel like, um, you know, they can kill veteran players, that there is a skill a skill gap, but it is manageable. Like you can break builds, they can get punished for those things. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel like that really existed before. And I don't know where they were going to go next. I'd love to see like hero abilities like Apex has. Um, <laughs> Apex Legends has like portals that let you like hey, rotate your listen. team around zones or like jump pads and like things to help you get around the zone faster. Mm -hmm. um, just a lot of movement abilities to speed up the play of the game. Because flying is great. I love flying. But it is the most dangerous thing you can do in the game because you're out in the open. You don't have the ability to build. There's probably no cover next to you. Like the the launch glitch that we were talking about earlier, I feel like was balanced because it, yes, it was something that only Quest users could do. And it gave you the reward of being able to rotate really fast. But it gave you the downside of you are now up in the air, out yep. in the open. So if someone saw you, you're just dead. Yep. So... Agreed. I feel like and, I mean form essentially of they mechanic. put in jump pads which did the same thing so just put it mm -hmm. back in there. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see or, jump pads or over make the a map. a giant black hole in the middle of planes that pops you up in cemetery. Just do that. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'd like to see jump pads just in more places in general because I feel like they're um, just really fun mechanics and they allow for that verticality. Like, especially with new players, they'll be climbing a little bit slower. So the verticality of the game doesn't take effect quite as much for them because it takes them longer to climb and get mm -hmm. to high ground in the first place. And I feel like the bounce pads could help that. But as we were saying earlier, maybe it's a comfort thing. Maybe they've, they've done a bunch of testing and um, the bounce that. pads aren't, yeah. aren't the route. So or, I'm not I sure. Mean, they could just keep the map and then make a whole lower level sewage level and, uh, you know, train station to the entire map and then have 
a very large map. <laughs> Just saying, big box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that gets interesting. So, like, Metro, if the zone ends at Metro and you have people on top and bottom, it just becomes, like, who dies last because yeah, they're not really fighting each heels. other. Yep. And I, I, want, I know they want to make sure that stuff like that doesn't happen so that the matches end faster. Because you're either going to be waiting, like, seven minutes for the zone to close in situations like that, or if you have a more open map, like the, the classic map is, people usually always know where the last couple of teams are if the zone's small, mm -hmm. um, and the matches end a lot faster. And I know one of the biggest things for VR games in general is making sure that if people are wearing their headsets, they are not just sitting there doing nothing. Right. Um one of the reasons the breachers the new game that just came out that's similar to rainbow six um, i'm interested to see how that one does specifically because if you treat breachers like population one where you try to run in and gun people down um and you die right at the start of a round the rounds and breachers are three minutes long so if you die right at the start you'll be sitting there for at least like two minutes waiting for everybody else to play so wow. you might just like get find the game is like super boring if you're not like playing the game the way it's supposed to be played. Yeah. So ke okay. keeping people invested in playing VR games or like keeping their headset on when they're dead or when they're playing a game and there's like you're just in a head peak meta when you're just waiting yeah. or like different elevations, things like that. I know they want to avoid situations like that because it's people just kind of waiting. And anytime people are just kind of like sitting and waiting, the game stops being quite as fun. So yeah. I can see that. All right. Final question of the interview. Uh, name something, an instance or a memory that you have. A wonderful thing of Pop One, whether it is a match you played, uh, a match you won, a person you met, uh, or an experience with a noob, or something that uh, brings you back to Pop One that you will always remember. I think some of the earliest stuff I remember would probably be playing games with Jert and just us messing around the whole time we're playing. Like we'd be in like heavy firefights and then I turn around and he'd just be like kind of chilling in the corner. Or we like, <laughs> like our teammate would be dying. We'd be playing patty cake, just funny, silly stuff like that. Um, obviously like the tournament was huge. And I think that was like really cool for the, the sake of the game and really cool for showing what VR like esports could be for like a game like population one i know mm -hmm. it wasn't super well received um just because of the way that the whole thing was set up but it was a good memory for me in all of the memories we made of it and the people that we were able to play with i remember during the invitational like everybody who was participating um chris tdb like there's a lot of names that don't play pop one anymore that were in there like chris tdb or like that mm -hmm. i haven't seen around um just a lot of people like that um Jumping up, Chris GDB. Everybody was there, and everybody was enjoying the game. Like we were, we were taking drinks while we were waiting because the Invitational <laughs> took so long. They were, they were like, it's gonna take like three hours. It ended up taking yeah. like six. So like oh while we're God. waiting between rounds, and they had to like recreate the lobby and stuff. We were, you know, just taking taking drinks and like hanging out. And I feel like that was um, something that's been lost recently when it became extra competitive in those mm -hmm. um, instances. So okay. stuff like that was really cool and um other than that there's no like super big instance that comes to mind it's just always generally good vibes whenever i'm playing with my friends awesome well i want to thank you for your time i know that um we you know had to figure out when to get you in here you're a super busy guy in terms of gaming and uh your tournaments and things like that so um thank you um, thank you for what you bring to the Population One community and your knowledge and your positivity and your furriness. I love it. So yeah. everybody, uh, one more time, Simachi, where can we find your content online? Yep, so twitch.tv slash Simachi is the main channel that I stream on. I try to stream every day. And then if you go to youtube.com slash the letter C and then slash Sumachi, that's me as well. I have um, five different YouTube channels that I upload to, actually. Uh, my main one is the one that I upload, Population One tutorials, match vods, and um, every once in a while some uh, cool side shorts and things like that. Perfect. Well, good luck wherever you're headed right after this. I know you're headed right into something else. So everybody say goodbye to Simachi. Have a good one. And thank you again. Yeah, thanks for having me. Bye, chat. Yep. Bye. And thank you to.
to more Cowbell for having this beautiful map in a sandbox for us to do our interview at. That was great. Thank you for providing this to us. These little minions are adorable. And uh, I'm going to find somebody for you guys to go hang out with on uh, Twitch. If you guys are still here on Facebook, thank you so much for all those likes and those shares. 